Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. Going back to your short film Proof, um, which I saw by the way, and it was fantastic. I, I, I found I found it on YouTube. Oh I f- wow! I found it on YouTube, uh, and I'll put links. I'll put links to it in the show notes so people can see it. Um, it was I could. There was like this one shot that I was like, "How did you get the camera in the cockpit to look up at the at the pilot?" I'm like, because the cameras were not that small back then. No. <laughs> so it must have been interesting how to get, how you did that. <laughs> I'm not sure what shot you're referring to, but I mean, we were shooting 16 millimeter. And so, so you, you know, might have that little, like a little Bolex or something like that. Right. Probably. It's, a small, it's a smaller camera, but I mean, if it was on, on Truman, the, the pilot, it was probably, you know, it was not, um, it was a sync camera. So it was a little bit bigger, but I mean, we, we broke all the rules. When oh, we made completely. Them. It was, insa- it's an insane, look, th- 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 for people to understand, it's about <laughs> a bunch of friends taking their one, another friend of theirs to go skydiving for the first time and it's i mean that's a that's a pretty risque short film on a on a danger level there were several times when uh, you know we were lucky nobody died it was it was, it was one of those kind of deals i mean the guy who was a, my production manager who you know i was very close to at the time he was a pilot you know, he was 21 years old and he was a pilot. So we would go out in the desert um, outside of Lancaster, California, in this old airfield. And uh, we didn't we he would go and rent a plane each weekend. We'd drive up there. We stayed in a Winnebago and he would go over and rent a plane, not telling them what we were doing with it. And then we would fly it and he would land it on this dirt strip and we would paint the plane. Uh, you know, we would spend half a day painting this plane, taking the seats and stuff out so that it looks like Truman's plane. And then we would shoot all weekend. And then like on Sunday night, we'd have to put all the stuff back in the plane, wash it. And then he'd have to fly it back to this place and turn it in. And we'd never tell him what we were doing with it. Wow. And you know, he was doing stuff like diving down on the location yeah. dots and stuff and <laughs> all illegal. And, uh, it's, yeah, again, we're very lucky. It's the insanity of youth, isn't it? It really is. The, it's the insanity. Because I did the dumbest things when I was, you know, teenager in my early 20s. Things that you just like, what? I didn't do that. But <laughs> I did insane, insane things. But let's just, let's just, you know, call a spade a spade. You quit your law practice to go to be a film director. So you're not altogether there at that age either. <laughs> right. Is that a fair is that a fair statement? <laughs> That's a fair statement. And and I think one of the problems, especially when you're younger, mm-hmm. you know, you think you're immortal. And oh. especially when you're in a movie, you think nothing bad can happen because this is make believe. And because we're doing make believe, you know, all all the jeopardy is make believe too, but it's not. And you forget that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, we were very we were very lucky. Now what was you know, I always like asking this question. What was the biggest lesson you learned from that first short film? Because that was the first time you directed, really, right? I, I had done smaller films at USC, but that was the first big one. They have two They have two levels of film. I don't know what they do now, but they have, it was called 480s and 580s. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it, before you did a 580, you were supposed to have directed a 580. And to do a 480, you were supposed to have worked in a crew position on the short film as either an editor or a production manager or, or something cameraman. Uh, and they gave me a waiver. They gave me a waiver and let me go ahead and direct a 580, having only edited a 480. Uh, again, I, you know, I was, I was very lucky. Um, but they liked the script, the USC. And I mean, that was such an, an amazing place to go to school. Uh, again, I don't know what it's like now, but it was just, I learned so much there. Uh, I, I still remember when I when I first went to see Mort Zarkov, and I'm sitting there in his office, and he's l- telling me, you know, all the classes you have to take, and you were supposed to start out shooting these non-sync little movies, and I was uh, trying to get him to wave me and let me just skip those and go on to the next level of, of film and stuff, and I'm talking to him, and he just stops me, and he goes, look, he says, 
we'll teach you how to make movies here. He said, we want people that have something to say. And that's always stuck with me. That, mm. And I realized finally that the strange collection of personalities that were going to school there, they were all from all different walks of life. I was an attorney. There were people that had been doctors and stuff. And for whatever reason, they just looked at their resumes and said, this person might have something to say. And their, their whole attitude is, we'll teach you the technical side, which they did. But then once you got there, you had to figure out how to <clears throat> how to have the wherewithal to say it. In other words, you had to be able to work the system to make your movie. And it was so frustrating at the time because you're competing with all these other people for, with limited resources and limited slots for the movies that were allowed and stuff. And when you get out, you finally realize it's the studio system. What they're teaching you is the studio system, that you have to fight other people and you have to battle other potential filmmakers for those slots. Mm. And you learn all the tricks, you know, uh, like every weekend when you're making a student film, you had to sign up for equipment out of the out of the, the equipment room. And uh, it was always limited. You know, you could always get the cameras you wanted or the grip gear and stuff like that. So I figured, OK, well. Here's what I'm going to do for my cameraman. I hired the guy that ran the equipment room. Smart. <laughs> so we got whatever we wanted. And it's just stuff like that that you learn. Okay, this is how you have to work the system to get what you want. And it goes beyond film school. It goes on to professionally too. And to me that was that was you know the most important thing I, I think I learned at USC was how, how, how to game the system. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com.